Hey, hello everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having an incredible day. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. I told you that this, I, I was trying to not say I told you so. Uh, I mentioned before that this was going to happen. And in a in an unrandom string of events, the cryptocurrency space has, in a, and I guess an okay, nice way, uh, has relatively become quite um, predictable in that uh, there's always a time period where prices are going up. I think we can all agree with that, regardless of if it's a bull run or not. Prices are rising at some point, things are going up. Uh, there's always something, always one thing that enters the market, enters the news, it terrifies the living heck out of everyone. Everyone begins to lose their mind. I, in, in the same cyclical fashion, I make a video telling everyone not to panic. You panicking does absolutely nothing. Why is everyone selling their coins? You're just selling your coins to rich people to whales. At some point, the price ends up going so low. What, happy, what, you know, what, what have you, so on and so forth. And then I always tell you, uh, give it a couple of days because we're always going to get the news that whales were buying up the cryptocurrency that was sold just off a couple of days ago. In, once again, it says, as the cryptocurrency market continues trying to recover from the downturn that it has been going through in the last couple of weeks, the largest holders of Bitcoin have once again taken the opportunity of fear that was thrown into the market to make everyone terrified. Notice how the entire, uh, for those of you who haven't been here in the last like week or 10 days, uh, the SEC filed a lawsuit against Binance and Coinbase. And then we got news about literally two days ago that apparently uh, they're now working everything out or looking for a solution, which basically means, you know, uh, someone has to pay up to someone else. But I was like, this has never happened within the cryptocurrency space. Normally, if a company gets in trouble, they grow through, they go through a long legal process, which is usually a year, a year and a half and or three years uh, with the SEC. So I was like, it's, it seems like this was once again manufactured just to try and get people to be uh, terrified of what was going on within the space. And especially after we got the news that uh, BlackRock was also entering the market as all this scary news was happening. And I was like, okay, uh, Bitcoin whales have taken the opportunity to increase their holdings while the prices remained relatively low. Bitcoin whales or wallets holding between 1,000 and 10,000 Bitcoin have collectively amassed around 131,600 Bitcoin worth over 3.5 billion US dollars just within the last 11 weeks alone and these are just wallets and I, and I and I lightly air quote here that have between 1000 and 10000 this is an egregious amount of bitcoin to have but understand that the wallets that are uh, you know, only have 700, 800, 900 Bitcoin are not in this ranking. They're not in this price. And they are also still accumulating. A lot of you out there maybe have half a Bitcoin or lucky enough to have an entire Bitcoin. I'm sure a lot of you are also accumulating Satoshis behind the scenes as well. So this is an another massive amount of Bitcoin that's being taken off of the market between 1,000 and 10,000, they accumulated $3.5 billion worth of Bitcoin in just around two and a half months. This is according to data shared by blockchain and crypto analytics firm Santiment. We often hear about Santiment, and you'll, you'll hear about the other one in a couple of seconds. There's a pretty chart for people who like charts. If the chart means anything to you, there's an arrow with a line going up. Therefore, that means accumulation, uh, what have you. Uh, this way, these Bitcoin whales have uh, brought back their collective accumulation supply levels to seven-week highs, soaring from 4.51 million Bitcoin in early April to 4.65 million Bitcoin at the time of me making this video. Uh, same exact thing here for those of you not looking at the screen. It says Bitcoin evaporating from exchanges into hodler wallets as bitcoin approaches the having date this is information from glassnode the cyclical all the time as we get closer to the bitcoin having more people are going to be accumulating more bitcoin 
Uh, this having is, now I say this lightly, this is looking like it's going to be the craziest one yet. Uh, why, you might ask, and I know someone just rolled their eyes, roll your eyes back. The idea is that in 2017, Bitcoin was lightly mainstream. People knew about it, but not a lot of people had it. When the price of Bitcoin went up to 15000 that's when people got into the market and just in an act of greed, it wasn't like actual adoption. The things that we had in 2017 are nowhere near what we have now on levels of adoption, people holding, people accumulating, the amount of people in the space, the amount of money flowing through Bitcoin on a daily basis. It is it is uh, it's un untold, unforeseen levels that we're currently dealing with right now. The bull run of 2021, for those of you who don't know, it's every four years. So Bitcoin halves every four years. In 2016, it was the halving. 2017 is the mega bull run. Every time after Bitcoin halves, the price begins to move up. We get roughly around the previous all-time high, and then the year after is the big shebang. So 2024 is Bitcoin's halving. We are less than a year away. The accumulation always happens. Bitcoin's price begins to rise. By the time we get to the halving, the same, I mean, we'll, we'll find out if it happens again. In the same nonsensical people talking about selling the news, these people have no idea what they're talking about. People always, the day of the halving, always try to sell off their Bitcoin in anticipation of the price dropping. The next four to five to six months, Bitcoin's price, of course, begins to rise higher. But for some reason, it's always the year after the halving. That's when prices completely go absolutely insane. So the idea is, once again, 2017, it was popular, wasn't really known about. 2021, during the bull run session, uh, we were undergoing as well an unprecedented event in history uh, where you know what happened. I don't even have to mention any of it. And therefore, it was also believed that this had a, a bit of a negative effect on prices. And this is why you kept on seeing people saying and showing charts that Bitcoin was going to at least $120,000, $150,000 just based off of normal metrics of where the prices of the market typically would have gone. Therefore, you know, getting to it, all that pent up energy from the last couple of years, the last bull run not really succeeding in what it normally would have done, these mega institutions who are officially into the cryptocurrency space since around 2020, 2021, now filling their pockets. There's not a lot of Bitcoin left. I'm seeing a lot of articles talking about that Bitcoin is becoming illiquid. That's not a... I think the phrasing of it is a little bit weird for a lot of articles. It sounds like uh, no one's using Bitcoin. <clears throat> and or people won't be able to cash out. The idea of Bitcoin becoming illiquid basically means that there's not a lot left on cryptocurrency exchanges. So the less that there is, any purchase will have a direct phys uh, positive impact on Bitcoin's price actually moving up. So as more Bitcoin gets taken off of exchanges, is held into wallets, not sold by people because we are now in that narrative period where everyone's talking about that Bitcoin will eventually hit 1 million, 1.5 million, 10 million dollars by the year 2032. I believe that's what it was. Not many people are going to be willing to sell their Bitcoin. People are accumulating the Bitcoin in, you know, in anticipation of X future event. Therefore, this is why people think that the less Bitcoin that there is on exchanges, the less there is to buy, the more there is being held and huddled. This will cause Bitcoin's price to rocket to unforeseen levels. This is why we're seeing now people are talking about the quarter of a million to a half a million dollar per Bitcoin by 2025. This also leads us into the same exact discussion of altcoins completely losing their minds. Why? Because historically, whenever Bitcoin moves up, altcoins do the exact same thing. They tend to have less volume and or less money in their own markets. Therefore, uh, if you would need 100 to move Bitcoin's price upward, you maybe only need 15, 25 to move an altcoin. So if Bitcoin goes up by 300, 400, 500% in the next two years, altcoins are expected to do a, a 10, 20, 30x, what have you. Long explanation, but I, I think people need to know these things because we are in it and we are entering 
uh, the next phase of, of the cycle. It's always the exact same. So you are going to see in 2026, the market is going to go down and people will once again act surprised. I don't get it. Why is the market going down? It's because it's cyclical. It's every four years and we are nearing the beginning of the uh, euphoric phase as they call it within the cryptocurrency space. So yeah, after all those videos that I've been making before, and I keep saying it over and over, rich people are continuously buying up tons of Bitcoin. Uh, I understand the idea of being afraid or paranoid or terrified uh, of people selling their Bitcoin or the price going down. But I think I've been in the market so long, it's, it's just like waking up in the morning and you have breakfast. You're like, oh, I'm thirsty. I need water. It, it's kind of just like evident at this point what's always taking place. Yeah, that's the Bitcoin is evaporating from cryptocurrency exchanges as people get ready for the next halving, which is going to be a bit of a doozy because also people begin to panic and accumulate more Bitcoin, <laughs> humans, when they realize that they could have done it before, like right now, but they wait until the last moment and or after the halving has taken place and they get it for a higher amount. That's for some reason... It's, it's kind of like with real estate. You can see, I've seen, oh my gosh, you, you, you wouldn't imagine. I've seen so many places listed for low amounts and I see, I, and I tell my friends about them and they have, no, no, the price is way too low. Something's wrong with that place. The price goes up a couple of years later and they go, oh my gosh, I wish I had bought. And I was like, yeah, I wish you had bought too. You'd probably be a little bit richer right now. That's the Bitcoin. Not a lot of it left on crypto exchanges news. And yeah, let's move on. In unsurprisingly surprising news, after almost a decade in business, San Francisco's Wire, that is W-Y-R-E, a cryptocurrency payment startup, has announced that they are going to be shutting down, citing the problems of the crypto winter. There's not really, a, okay, rather than any strong regulatory agency direction in the United States. Uh, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure they are. Why is the company that was working with Vivi? And they were the company that was allowing people to uh, put money in and also take money out. And I think they were the uh, the facilitator of you being able to cash in with crypto into Vivi and also cash out as well. So the Vivi community had news months ago uh, that Wire was having some issues or I think that Vivi was looking for a new uh, payment partner. Uh, so this is why I said like it's, it's news, but it's also like people kind of knew this already that this was definitely taking place. On the 16th of June... The firm said it would be shutting down in order to protect the best interests of our key stakeholders and customers, the company stated, and I do quote, Wire continues to secure customer assets. If you have assets on the Wire platform, you can continue to withdraw them via Wire's dashboard until Friday, the 14th of July. After then, we will have a separate process to recover assets remaining on the platform. So if anyone out there has money on Wire, W-Y-R-E, take your money off immediately. Um, I wonder, I mean, the company will never say, but I always wonder like the full extent of like what really happened. Like, was it the crypto winter wink or was it just like a, a lack of interest in their platform because maybe there's another website or company that opened up that we don't know about that was taking off a, you know, a huge portion of their business. Uh, yeah, interesting. So the uh, last two years continue to strike as we see interest rates rising and companies closing and layoffs happening and all that other stuff. But you know, I once again cyclical. So I hope they come back at some point and uh, take a page from Binance's book. Binance can, I mean, whatever. I never mind. I'll continue. Okay, whatever. Fine. I was I was gonna say I I always find it weird, but this is because I don't own a multi billion dollar company. I always find it so odd that these companies like are doing really well and then they kind of collapse. And it's because in my mind, I would only be making sure that as crypto prices are going up, that I was uh, investing behind the scenes to make sure that my company had more than enough funds to weather out any kind of storm. Have you ever seen anything online about how much cash that um, Apple holds and how many other investments they have? Like in the unlikely event of something happening to Apple or like to their products or whatever, like they have billions of dollars in reserve to make sure that should something happen, 
they can still pay their, you know, you understand what I'm saying. So I always wonder how other companies operate. Are they like, you know, spreading themselves too thin? There are so many startups out there just in, in, in general, like that when they get a new office, they're paying too much for the rent as opposed to letting their workers work remote. So they have to pay for these gigantic offices. Some of them are spending twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars on plants for the office. It, it, it's always these really weird things. So who knows? Anyway, that's the uh, wire is closing. They were a a a pathway, a bridge for many companies uh, sending cryptocurrency payments. There are others out there, so I hope that they uh, work with them soon. That's the wire news, and yeah. Let's move on. In what I call completely confusing news, because I found no information anywhere about what this actually was. So if you can explain it to me, that'd be great. A group of Terra Luna Classic Core developers, the joint L1 Task Force L1TF, have announced that they are ready for a parity upgrade, which apparently took place a couple of days ago. The Terra Classic community unanimously voted in favor of Proposal 11561, paving the way for the critical update to be implemented. Uh, so, apparently, there is an upgrade that took place on Terra Luna Classic, and all I continue to find is information that it is going to bring it up to parity. Now, parity is a word in English... That means like to the same level of like we we are on parity that you know not not parody like as in comedy p a r i t y, however it's not explained anywhere what this actually is if it's just an upgrade or if it's simply like the name of the thing. The primary change in this upgrade will see the upgrade bring Terra Classic to parity with other blockchains. That doesn't make any sense, such as Terra 2.0 and other Cosmo chains. Okay, this will allow developers and projects to start building once again on the Terra Classic chain. The Parity upgrade is considered one of the main significant upgrades since the Terra community took control of the project after Do Kwan. Right, but what, what does it do? Um, it also says it somewhere around here. The upgrade primarily consists of features such as minimum 5% commission for validators, Cosmo Wasm version 1.1, and two security upgrades. Other significant changes include the upgrade at Wasm Virtual Machine upgrade to V.1.12, WASMD upgrades for multi-chain compatibility, compatibility, geez louise, IBC Go V3.1, along with other bug fixes. Yeah, see, right, yeah, was, okay, so it's not just me then, because I, I, I was like, what the, what the fudge is going on? Like, I'm not getting it. Uh, apparently, Binance has announced support for the upgrade as well. Once again, it doesn't make any sense. Binance announces support for the much-awaited Terra Classic version 2.1 upgrade, seeking to bring L Luna Classic to parity with Luna 2 and Cosmos. Does that mean like parity for the amount of coins? Is Luna Classic going to be burning coins so that they are on the same level as Luna 2 and, and Cosmos? Will they have as many validators? What exactly is the parity? Is the upgrade just simply called parity because they, they thought it sounded nice? Right. So anyway, Binance uh, historically has uh, followed every Terra Luna Classic upgrade and or supported them. Starting a year or two ago with the uh, massive coin burn, burn as many Terra Luna Classics as possible to boost up the price. So cool. Um, Terra Luna Classic has another new upgrade. It is now to parity with Luna 2 and Cosmos. No information as to what this actually is, but I assume people holding Terra Luna Classic know and are very excited for it. I can I can feel you writing in the comment section, and I'm still confused. I haven't read it yet, but my I, I still have no idea what's going on. That's the Terra Luna Classic, uh, Luna 2 and Cosmos parity news. Wonderful. That was fantastic. Okay. Let's move on. Also in the news... Ripple, the company, has apparently entered into a partnership with Canada's largest university by enrollment, the University of Toronto, 
The partnership is a part of Ripple's University Blockchain Research Initiative, UBRI, a program that supports a diverse portfolio of blockchain research, technical development, and innovazione at universities around the world. The university plans to start work on an independent XRP ledger validator. UBRI has been driving significant blockchain and crypto technology research within Canada, which is in addition to a number of benefiting ter tertiary okay, institutions What in the country. The program will allow university students to acquire and improve skills that will make them relevant in the fast growing. That is a weird sentence. The program will allow university students to acquire and improve skills. In what way? What way is the XRP ledger doing that for them? That will make them relevant in the fast-growing crypto industry. Also doesn't make any sense. So uh, Ripple has a really weird thing where like whenever they have a huge partnership with a and anything, whatever the, the, the actual partnerships might be, we never know how deep they go. We never know why they're, you know, explicitly happening. Uh, but they tend we always tend to get news that the company or whatever that they've partnered with uh, has started using an XRP validator to validate transactions on top of it. We first started getting news about this in like 2019. There were a large number of like that Japanese bank, um, the one that Ripple has been working with for a long time. Uh, I was going to say Plinko Cinco, but that doesn't make any sense. I can't remember what this what this bank is called anymore. The, anyway, um, they started using an XRP validator, and as did many other companies and also uh, institutions and universities for some reason. So, um, uh, cool, uh, fascinating, and I, I don't know. I mean, I, I guess it's kind of cool. Uh, I don't know. Does Ripple or say it this way? Does XRP have a max amount of, of validators that are possible? You know how like uh, EOS previously, I haven't kept up with the project in like 9,000 years. I know they previously only had only had 21 different validators on their network. And there are a couple of other coins. I, I think Polygon also only has 100 validators. Is that the same for XRP? Is there, you know, is there a maximum amount of validators that there can be? Uh, I'm asking because I, I simply don't know. People never tend to talk about like validators and or validating transactions. It's more, this blockchain is this fast. My blockchain can do this. We have the upgrades and the updates of the other coins don't have, you know, it's never like a um, validation kind of topic. So of course it has the word ripple in it and therefore it is going to be incredibly popular. Ripple works with Canada's largest university on XRP validator initiative. Fantastic. Does anyone know how many validators XRP currently has? Are these being, are these extra um, nodes or validators that Ripple has that they're simply now handing off to different entities who they trust? I, I have all the questions and rightio. That's the XRP is now being validated by Canada's largest university news. Oh, oh, you know, always nice to hear that decentralization is happening and that other uh, entities are getting into the cryptocurrency space as well. It can't just be us. We need other people to also uh, be in the market, if that makes any sense. Yeah, um, I think that's going to do it for this video. Uh, for those of you who are wondering, I am away traveling. I am doing stuff. There's a lot to take care of. I'm always, you know how tired I am? Like, I'm literally just exhausted. There's always always something to do uh, at any given day. Um, I do hope sincerely that you have all enjoyed. I do hope that you all are having a great day, great morning, great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever the heck you might be. I do hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, commenting, and or supporting. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See